And we have another guest joining us now in our New York studios. Brooke Lundy is a singer and songwriter who has worked with Phil Spector. Great to see you, Brooke. Thank you. Thanks. All Brooke. right. Well, we just saw a, a string of women, and those of us who've watched this trial saw a whole bunch of women who came into court and testified about, you know, what it's like to be around Phil Spector. You obviously are a woman. You have worked with Phil Spector. What was your experience like? Um, my experience was actually wonderful. He was always very gentle with me. Um, I worked with him from 99 till 2001 and um, went to the castle numerous times to work with him and uh, and he was always very nice, very gentlemanly like, you know, always, you know, concerned that I was comfortable and never protested when I left and but I also never dated him and I also never saw him drink alcohol. That's so. what I was gonna ask you. You know, did alcohol ever come into play here? Never. Now never at the castle, it, isn't there a big bar in, in the castle? Did yes. you ever see that? Yes, absolutely. We sat at the bar. Um, and he would always just have Diet Cokes and uh, you know I would have a glass of water with lemon. We were singing at the time, so uh, we were working on songs at the castle. So you know, he would sit at, at the bar and he show, he had lots of pictures of lots of people he'd worked with behind the bar and he would tell wonderful, funny stories about them and um, he was always very nice and very considerate to me. And, well, Brooke, uh, I have to ask you, I mean, you say you didn't date him. Did he attempt to date you? No, not at all. Really? Uh, we had more of, of kind of a father-daughter kind of relationship is what it felt like to me. Um, when he first when we first started working together, um, he really felt that he wanted to make a comeback. He wanted to make a new record um, that we were going to do together. He was very excited about being back in the industry and, uh, and very excited to work together. So I think he was trying to really be professional, really get back into the, into the game again. And, uh, and he saw me as someone that he really wanted to work with and was very nice to me and really made me feel comfortable with him enough that we were going to, going to be recording a record together. And he was on the wagon. He wasn't drinking exactly. at all. Not not even one drink, right? Not, not even one. Did he ever say to you, I mean, there you are, I can imagine you're sitting at the bar in his house, which <laughs> is filled with bottles of booze. Yeah. Did he ever say to you, uh, look, I don't have, I don't drink because I have a drinking problem, anything like that? No, he never mentioned that. He didn't I, explain why he wasn't drinking? No, he never did. Um, and at one of my shows, actually, the first time I ever noticed it, I was doing a show at the Coconut Teaser um, on the Sunset Strip in Los Angeles, and he showed up out of the blue and a white Rolls Royce and it was a big deal and so of course my first question to him is oh what can I get you to drink you know yeah. and hit and he goes oh just Diet Cokes right. thank you right you know that was Did his you, answer well see and, and Brooke this is so consistent with everything that we've heard a lot of women who worked with him who knew him socially say what a charming gentle sweet guy absolutely great my own mother had dinner with him Gloria Allred and she came on really? the show and said he did never drink and he was a perfect gentleman he was funny and charming and he was terrific and exactly. there seems to be such a dichotomy of Phil Spector not drinking and mm -hmm. Phil Spector under the influence and, and becoming a mean drunk nasty hostile to women exactly when you worked with him during those couple of years did you hear stories about him drunk wielding guns threatening women yes before I ever met him um, I met him by going to the castle actually for the first time and his ex-wife Janice um, was his assistant at the time and she said I know you've heard all the stories you know from years past but he's a wonderful man and I'll be there to meet you when you get to the castle you know so she put me at ease so I'd heard all the stories before ever meeting him yeah. so going to the castle I felt that those were all behind him and they were kind of hype is what I thought. Well, you know, it's great to meet you, Brooke, and hear your story. And, you know, we mm -hmm. talk to the most interesting people.